Hey guys, Sunny here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching The Privacy Guides. In last episode, we talked about iCloud Private Relay and compared it to VPNs and to Tor. If you haven't watched that episode, I highly recommend watching it, maybe even before this one. So you can pause it, open this in another tab and go back to it. Um, so yeah, iCloud Private Relay is a pretty cool initiative by Apple. But as I've mentioned in last episode, there are a whole bunch of caveats, which I'll let you discover those in the other episode. In today's episode, we're talking about mail privacy protection. Um, so yeah, email is actually one of the ways that we are definitely track. Uh, there are a whole bunch of ways of tracking us, but a lot of those involve little hidden pixels that when they're opened, when an email is open, that little pixel fetches an image. And as part of the URL, it reveals a lot about who we are. So the person, you know, that email marketing company knows what device we're using, when we open the email, how many times we have opened the email, and essentially where we are roughly based on geolocating IP addresses. That is exactly what mail privacy protection is trying to mitigate. So mail privacy protection hides your IP address so senders can't link it to your other online activity or determine your location. And it pre prevents senders from seeing if and when you've opened their emails. So let's have a look at how this actually works under the hood. Um, so here, this is an email that I've received from Google Search Console. Essentially, as you can see here, I never load remote images. So one thing that you guys can all do, even if you're not on iOS uh, 15 or Monterey, is go into Mail Preferences and disable, uh, disable load remote content and messages. By doing that, the uh, email client will not fetch those images, hence will not show to that provider that one has opened the email. Now, clearly, if I hit that load remote content, uh, from that point on, all of those images are going to be loaded from Google servers and Google will know that I've looked at that email. But how does Google actually do this? Um, well, interestingly enough, we can look at the source code of that email. And what we can see here at the bottom is essentially what all of the people, you may have read that in different you know, newspapers or whatever, that is a pixel. And it's quite literally a pixel. So this here, as you can see, emails, they have like a maximum width and they have all of this weird stuff. If you guys know HTML, you may be wondering what that is. Well, that is something called quoted printable. It's a way of formatting uh, HTML for email. And we can actually take that little uh, pixel here and we can run it through Perl and see what is actually going on here. So we can see that that here is an HTML image with a height of one pixel, a width of three pixels, and it is actually fetching a GIF, which I am guessing will be transparent from uh, notifications.google, blah, 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 blah. So this here is actually how we're tracked. If you would look at the source code of pretty much all email marketing uh, emails that you've received, that would be there somewhere. Now, some people even bring this to a whole other level, and all images from an email will have this little metadata here that reveals that a specific person has viewed the image. Uh, now in the context of this email here, it's not the case, but we can see that a lot of links that are clickable will also fire up uh, you know, those trackers. So in order to block those, one needs to not click on links, which is quite inconvenient, or uh, not display images as I've shown earlier. So what is Apple doing differently? Why can't we not just not load images? Well, Apple's perspective on this is emails should be beautiful and should uh, one should be able to load all of this like rich HTML content, images and stuff without compromising our privacy. Uh, there are there's a huge caveat which I'll you know mention at the end of the episode. Uh, by the way, if you're liking this so far, click the like button. It really helps. Um, so what they're doing here is. They're using the same technology that I've discussed in last episode. So if you enable mail privacy protection, it uses the private relay network to route those requests through proxies. But it also does that a little differently than in the context of just Safari browsing. What happens is when the email client, so Apple Mail on iOS or macOS receives an email, it will randomly, meaning not at that exact timing, fetch all of this you know, rich content, the images and stuff like this, but it will fetch them 
spoofing the headers. That means that when one accesses this, usually one reveals what email client we have. That is why MailChimp, for instance, knows how many people are viewing this on iOS, how many people are viewing it on Windows. They know this because when we're fetching that little image, we're actually revealing all this. So they're spoofing that information a little bit like I'm doing that in the context of Firefox. Uh, and they're also routing this uh, request through the private relay. So email client is setting up, establishing an HTTPS connection with the ingress proxy. Ingress proxy will say, hey, we are in Cupertino, for instance. So then the client will say, okay, I am in Cupertino, and it will then encrypt a connection true ingress proxy, egress proxy to you know, that asset. This is furniture site from last episode, but essentially that would be like this image. And then that image would be routed back. So since that image is actually uh, fetched from the egress proxy and that is spoofing an address in Cupertino, but that isn't the one that we actually have, well, it means that that tracking company will not be able to know who actually opened that based on IP addresses. And it also means that if they're dealing with data brokers, some the data brokers won't be able to buy that data set and correlate it using one's IP to other data points, such as you know Facebook, credit card purchases, uh, DNS queries. Uh, I've talked about that in last episode, so I won't go over it all over again today. Um, I guess this is a good time to mention today's sponsor. Today's sponsor is you. All of this work that I'm doing, I'm doing it because I really care about privacy and all of this work uh, is done for you guys. And I've disabled monetization on YouTube. I have a few episodes on why, but essentially this project, me doing more of this, is essentially possible thanks to you guys donating and supporting my work. So if you go on sunnewton.com slash donate, you can support me through LibraPay, which is kind of like an open source, nonprofit, privacy conscious alternative to Patreon, which I should do an episode on in the near future. And uh, you can also donate using Bitcoin. So thanks to everyone who has supported me. Your help makes it so that I can do more of this and actually do more of this profound research as well. So going back to Apple, uh, there are a few caveats. Well, uh, as I've mentioned a few in last episode, I don't think Apple is doing this because they're altruistic or anything. I think they're doing it because they want to make a killing. I've discussed this in last episode, so I won't go over this today. But the other thing is uh, this male privacy protection is only good as long as uh, well, for instance, when you do load those images, you are letting that marketer know that you've potentially opened the email. So it is still fetching that image. And since that URL includes metadata, it is still firing the open. That means that they will know that to some extent that email was delivered and perhaps seen. Uh, the other thing is since all of the links in the emails have tracking as well, as soon as one clicks one of those links, they absolutely know that we've engaged with the email and they can then track us on that destination web page. So it's good and it will definitely hurt email marketers in the context of open rates, but that's pretty much it. It will also help with data brokers, but I'm using a VPN on my computer and I route all of my traffic through Malvad. I have a kill switch, meaning all of my traffic is forced to go through the VPN. So I am benefiting from the same IP protection than male privacy protection. And that actually applies to anything I do in my computer. So the only thing really that this would do for someone like me or you, if you're using a VPN that's well configured, is uh, make it so that the VPN provider itself cannot necessarily correlate that traffic is originating from you. Uh, I've talked about this in the last episode, there may be collusion, so it's not like something like Tor, it's not as great for anonymity, for instance, but it is okay. Uh, the other thing is that, uh, I mean, I don't really see which, I mean, it is spoofing the user agent, but that's only revealing if you're like on an iPhone, which doesn't tell that much. Maybe the version of the iPhone is revealed as well, and that could be used for fingerprinting, but yeah. So essentially Apple is creating these technologies that are routing more and more of one's internet traffic through their technology stack. And that is centralizing in a way the internet. And that's something that I really don't believe in. Um, again, I wish Apple had a way for us to choose a proxy that isn't theirs. So the intention is good. The technology is well thought out. 
but I'm really, uh, I have max, mixed feelings about all of this consolidating on Apple. So hope this was insightful. If you liked the episode again, please like the episode. It helps with the algorithm and I will see you soon. Bye.